first, lay your shirt out on a flat surface. You're gonna start from the middle, pinching your shirt and twisting it. As it all starts coming together, you're gonna take the sides and shape it around the spiral. Next, you're gonna secure your shirt with rubber bands. Four usually does the trick by making sure that all parts of the shirt are tucked in neatly. You're gonna start off with your first color. The size of the section controls how large or small the lines of the spiral will be. So, in order to fold, we're going to start this way because I want my stripes to go across like this. So I would turn my shirt on its side and begin folding on one side. I'm going to come up, kind of give it a little press with your fingers. Bring this one back on the sleeve. And then you're just gonna pick your shirt up a little bit and keep folding it over like a little accordion. And now we're ready to rubber band. So we're gonna take this rubber band and we're gonna start at one end and go in about mm, like roughly two inches and then just wrap it around. And you just keep going until you've got your shirt all the way up to the top. So I'm going to start at the bottom with one color. And you just squeeze it on just like that. To start off, you're gonna lay your shirt flat. You're gonna begin by bunching up your shirt with the tips of your fingers. want to continue bunching until your shirt looks like fully cooked ramen noodles or almost like a brain. Next, you're going to put rubber bands over your folded t-shirt. We like to use four for extra security, making sure to tuck in all the sides. Now it's time to dye the shirt. We're using three colors so that we can get a rainbow effect with red, yellow, and blue. The best part about this shirt is that it doesn't have to be exact. So you can basically splatter the colors anywhere you'd like. You'll start with your shirt laid flat on your surface. You'll start off anywhere that you want to put your bullseye. Right now we're going to work with the center. Pinch it right at the center and pull it straight up. Using your other hand and just guide it through like this. Then you'll take your rubber bands. Attach the rubber band uh, about an inch to two inches down from where you started to pull at the center. You'll continue this process, add another rubber band here, and keep going all the way down until your t-shirt looks just like this. And then apply your color. And you can alternate colors just like this. Just go maybe every other one or even every two. Just take your next color. First, decide what kind of design you want on your shirt. For mine, I'm going to use the crumple technique. So I've crumpled up my shirt and now I need to gather it together and add rubber bands to keep it in place. For this design, you really can't mess it up, but we do want the rubber bands on it to hold the folding in place. So I'm just kind of crisscrossing rubber bands here and I'm going to add at least one more. I'm just securing any loose ends here into the rubber bands, but again, it doesn't really matter if it, some of them are sticking out. It's not really going to mess up your design. I could dye this however I want. I could just sprinkle the dye on top, or I could put dye in the sections that the rubber bands have created. So here I have like one, two, three, four, five, six. I could do six different colors, but it's really up to you. It's hard to really mess up tie dye. One thing you do wanna think about is how colors blend together. So for example, if I used yellow and purple only, when those two colors mix together, they make a neutral color, like a brown or a gray, which you might not really like. 
If I used orange and yellow together and pink, those are all warm colors and they would blend nicely together. Or if I did this in a rainbow order, which I'm going to do, then I know that that would blend nicely together. So think about the color wheel and which colors you're placing next to each other. Now that the rubber bands are on my shirt, the next step is soaking your item in water. So this is going to allow the dye to absorb the fabric more easily. So I'm just making sure it gets a little bit wet and squeezing out some of the water and then we are ready to add our dye. Before you start adding dye, make sure you put gloves on your hands so your hands do not get stained with the dye. Then you'll need a metal tray, which you'll be doing your dyeing in. You can place your item inside and then you can pick out your colors. For mine, I'm using rainbow colors with pink. When you're ready to dye, take off the cap and please do not throw the caps on the ground. We do not want to lose the caps. There's a box that says tie dye lids. Please place the cap that you use inside of the box so that we don't lose it. And we will need to share our colors. So make sure you're just using one at a time and you're not keeping all of the colors to yourself. I can just kind of sprinkle the color on here and it will soak in more into the shirt because remember we soaked it in water first and the shirt is wet. So that will allow the dye to really soak in. It's also okay if you have some white spots that creates a cool effect too. You never want to squeeze too much onto your shirt and get a giant puddle of dye in your tray. That would be pretty wasteful and we don't want to end up wasting the dye that could be used on another project. So remember, take off the cap and place it in the tie-dye lids box. And then just put the dye right on the shirt. You can put it kind of inside a little bit if you want it to really soak into the middle and turn it around to get the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the colors. Once you're done with the dye, then make sure you have your plastic bag with your name on it and you can put your item inside. Make sure you seal the bag. And then you're going to leave this in here for at least 24 hours to soak. After 24 hours, you can take the item out, take the rubber bands off and hang it up somewhere to dry. This will allow the color to really soak in and for your design to take effect. With the extra dye that's in your tray, you should pour it out in the box that says, pour extra dye in here. So take your tray and carefully pour it into the box. That way we don't end up spilling the dye somewhere and it ends up just inside of this box. When we're cleaning up, you can help put the caps back on the tie dye bottles. Make sure that you're looking at the color that's written on the bottle. So this is pink and I'm putting a pink cap on it. If for some reason we can't find the matching cap, it's better to put a cap on there than have no cap at all. And then you can take your gloves off and throw them away. I hope you have fun doing tie dye today. I can't wait to see how your items turn out.